assassination, skinny dipping, and Nobel Prizes. Today we're talking Teddy Roosevelt Part 2. The Alpha of Alphas, the Sigma of Sigmas. Teddy Roosevelt was one of our craziest presidents. You might remember him from Mount Rushmore, but he did so much more. From the last episode, we were talking about how he became vice president. Well, after the assassination of President McKinley, Teddy Roosevelt now became president. Following this, Teddy Roosevelt didn't actually get another vice president. He didn't have one his entire first term. The establishment wasn't a huge fan of Teddy Roosevelt. He had a lot of different views on how things were going to be done. He was a progressive against the Republicans, and he wasn't racist against the then Southern Democrats. Something that really made them mad was that he was friends with Booker T. Washington. He would invite him over to the White House, and that really made people upset. Didn't really care, and he became better friends with him anyway. Teddy Roosevelt also really cared about national forests. He was a big conservationist, but Congress didn't want him to have the authority to be able to create national forests out of nowhere. Congress made a bill that was vastly important and he needed to sign it, but they added in a little section saying that he couldn't make national forests. So what did he do? Well, he stayed up because he only had 48 hours to be able to come up with his national parks before having to sign that bill. So he didn't sleep, he got out maps and he drew out the national forests that he wanted to create, including Yellowstone. Signed into law that those were national parks, 15 minutes later he signed the legislation approving the fact that he could no longer make any more national parks. This was one of their first signs that he really was good at political maneuvering. The thing that won him the Nobel Prize was that he helped end the Russo-Japanese War. Russia and Japan were fighting at the time, and Japan was absolutely kicking the butt of Russia, but they were still sort of holding their own. Roosevelt was able to figure out how to make them see eye to eye. See, he grew up as an aristocrat, and so he knew how to talk to pompous rich people, which includes emperors and czars. So, by getting them to communicate, he was able to get them to stop that war, which was basically unnecessary earning him the Nobel Peace Prize. He was the first American to do so, by the way. With his friendships with czars and the Kaiser of Germany, he was able to prevent World War I for his entire presidency. There were many rumblings that that war was gonna start, and basically everybody knew that it was happening. But it didn't happen while he was in office. Now, some of the things that he's been criticized for was he vastly expanded the power of the president, including making national parks. He also had the square deal, and he reduced the power of Congress. His mantra of speak softly but carry a big stick went into effect while president president, where he would kind of push his way into situations, take a little bit more control than a lot of other people were comfortable with. But people have criticized him as being one of the first real imperial presidents. Some people saying that he was the first real president to move us from the Republic to an empire similar to Rome. He also worked to try and dismantle some of the trusts that were very powerful at the time. Of course, he also fought back against the socialists, preventing them from being able to take more control in the US. He also created legislation to help make food and drugs safer in the US. As well, he also built the Panama Canal, a project that the French tried and failed at many, many times. They were very famous for waving their white flag when it comes to the Panama Canal. There were no major wars while Teddy Roosevelt was president. The Philippines Rebellion and the Moro Rebellion were the main ones that were happening at the time. Now, the Moro Rebellion in the Philippines is made up of Muslim minorities in the Philippines. Moro, which is just Spanish for Moors, which were the Muslims that took over the Iberian Peninsula, or Spain, for us normal folk, in previous centuries. This minority of practitioners of Islam in the Philippines continued their fight up until about 2014 with the terror organization MILF. Yes, MILF, but not that one. It's Moro Islamic Liberation Front. They were a major organization for many, many decades, especially in Mindanao, an island in the Philippines. He was president during the Panic of 1907. It was the greatest economic crisis in 20 years. During his time as president, he also had the teddy bear named after him. Go watch the video about that that I've already made, but after this one. He was also known for boxing in the White House, including going blind in one eye. And then he was like, oh, I better not do anything anymore. I better just settle down. I am an older man now. Just kidding. He started doing jujitsu. He was also famous for swimming naked in the Potomac with foreign diplomats that would come to visit him. After leaving the White House, he went on a massive safari for over a year in Africa, collecting over 20,000 samples and having the time of his life shooting a bunch of animals. Also captured a whole bunch of animals and brought them back to the National Zoo. His hand-picked successor, President Taft, was president after him. However, he did not like Taft's position on many things. He wasn't nearly as progressive as Teddy Roosevelt felt he should be. Following his return after his safari, he decided to run for president again. However, not being able to get the Republican nomination, he decided to start his own party, where he got absolutely destroyed, splitting the vote, and giving us the worst president of all time, Woodrow Wilson. Those are pretty big words because there are a lot of terrible presidents, but I will say Woodrow Wilson resegregated the government and locked up thousands of people who spoke out against him. While Teddy Roosevelt was running for president, 
he got shot by an attempted assassin. However, he was just like, it takes more than that to take out a bull moose. He continued giving his speech. That bullet remained lodged in him until this day. He got lucky though, because he had a speech in his pocket that the bullet went through. And when I was trying to figure out what happened to that speech, owned by Glenn Beck, after losing, he decided to go get lost in the Amazon. One of his friends, who was kind of a dummy, convinced him that he needed to go to the Amazon and go and search out a river. Imagine his friend was kind of like one of those guys that you knew in college, but you probably shouldn't trust anymore. But he went along with him down into the Amazon. Teddy's son, Kermit, yes, Kermit, decided to go with him to make sure his dad didn't die down in the Amazon. While there, absolutely insane things happened. They discovered a river, there was murder, there was intrigue, there was betrayal, there were cannibals. There were many, many crazy things that happened and they probably deserve a video of their own. There's also an amazing book called River of Doubt about Roosevelt discovering the River of Doubt, which then got later renamed to Roosevelt River or Rio Roosevelt in Portuguese. Roosevelt barely survived. He got a massive gash in his leg trying to free some canoes that got stuck on the river and nearly died of infection because penicillin wasn't a thing yet. He told his son Kermit to just leave him. But Kermit decided, no, he was gonna save him. He wasn't about to leave his father. Now, during this expedition, Teddy Roosevelt lost 60 pounds. Brings us to the new diet craze. Go to the Amazon and try not to die. In other news, I'll be going to the Amazon. But his trials weren't over. His sons and one of his daughters went and fought in World War I. His youngest son, Quentin, was a fighter pilot and got shot down and killed while fighting the Germans. He is to this day the only president's son to be killed in combat. He was buried by the Germans in a very respectful funeral, and then later buried in France by the Americans in a cemetery. Now this was a major issue of the time. A lot of American mothers wanted their sons to be returned home to the US, but Teddy Roosevelt, who decided to have his son buried where he fought, caused a lot of the mothers of the United States to decide that their sons could remain there. Teddy could bear to have his son stay there as well. Be like Teddy and shoot that subscribe button, pew pew. Now, Teddy Roosevelt felt really terrible that he had sent his son off to die in a war. He knew that there was a big part was his encouragement to live the strenuous life. Because of his ill health from his trip down the Amazon, he died six months later. Now, one of my favorite quotes from Teddy Roosevelt, we must all either wear out or rust out. My choice is to wear out. And wear out he did. He lived to the age of 60. Now, Teddy Roosevelt was an incredibly contentious figure. There were amazing things about him and not so good things about him. But overall, he is one of our best known presidents. However, his kids are also incredible. They honestly probably deserve videos of their own, but I'm just gonna tell you a little bit about them. His oldest daughter, Alice, married a Republican representative, but had at least one affair with other senators and probably many more. She was also barred from the White House by President Taft because she made a voodoo doll of President Taft's wife, the first lady, and buried it in the White House front yard. She was also later barred from the White House yet again by President Wilson after she made fun of him, which isn't that hard to do. Thankfully though, Unlike many of his adversaries, including Debs who ran for president, he wasn't unjustly sent to prison. For the rest of the kids, they weren't so wild, but they were extremely adventurous. Teddy Roosevelt III, a well-known political figure, but he is best known for his service during both World War I and World War II, most especially the many battles that he fought in. However, his best known one was when he stormed the beaches of Normandy, which he was awarded the Medal of Honor. General Omar Bradley, of the US Army later said that the most courageous thing he ever saw was Ted Roosevelt on Utah Beach. However, soon after this, he died of a heart attack and was buried alongside his brother Quentin in France. Meanwhile, Teddy Roosevelt IV also fought in World War II. Teddy Roosevelt V and was a Navy SEAL during Vietnam, and he is still alive today. I couldn't find any information about Teddy Roosevelt VI, 7th, or 8th, even though I think they all exist. Next, we have Kermit. Now, Kermit was quite the jet setter, even though there weren't jets at the time. After his trip in the Amazon, when World War I started, he initially joined the British Army and fought in Mesopotamia until the US entered the war and he then went over and fought on the Western Front, including in the Meuse Argonne Offensive, the deadliest battle in American history. World War II came back around, he joined the British Army once again and led a troop of commandos in the Battle of Narvik in Norway. Also tried to join the Finnish to fight the Soviets, however the war ended before he could make it there. However, because of a medical condition, he was discharged from the British Army and returned to the US. Following this, sadly, he had a mental breakdown and disappeared. His cousin, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt, had to get the FBI to track him down. Following his recovery, the U.S. entered the war and he joined as a major in the U.S. Army. Sadly, his mental illness did return and he took his own life while stationed in Alaska. Now for his next daughter, Ethel. She served as a nurse during World War I and World War II. She was also a major civil rights figure. Archibald, the next son, he also served in both world wars. However, he is the only son of Teddy Roosevelt to actually live to a ripe old age of 85. 
and of course Quentin, who sadly died fighting for freedom in World War I. If you haven't checked out my part one of Teddy Roosevelt prior to his presidency, go do that now. Thank you so much for watching. Check out all my other videos and have a great rest of your day.